Hello and welcome back. I am Conan Libaron with Conan's EDC, Easy Dad Carry, and today we're going to make some fire kindling. Let's take a look. So I've been inspired recently. Camping and hiking season is on us. I made a post a little bit ago about doing some fire practice and starting in safety with the kiddos, and it, it's got me thinking a little more about my gear and what I've got going, and I was inspired recently by a couple things. One, going through my gear just to see what I have since the season's changing, and uh, my buddy Rich over at True Budget EDC sent me this a little while ago, an actual fire kit. I love this. It's got uh, fire starter cubes, lint, strike anywhere, some tinder that you put on a Swiss Army knife. Just a super cool kit. Uh, and that made me think, all right, I like this. <clears throat> what else is out there? What are some other options? Uh, and because I like building kits, I thought I'd give it a crack too, because it doesn't hurt too to have more than one source of fire, kindling, whatever it is, a way to start. Um, the other thing that really inspired me is, obviously, I do a lot of EDC. And obviously, I like to do a lot of camping and outdoor stuff and hiking. Well, I mentioned this straw, this straw kindling tube thing a few times, and a few people in the EDC community have just not known what it is. And that's totally okay. Just because you EDC doesn't mean that you know a lot about, or I shouldn't say a lot, rather, it doesn't mean you're going to know every little thing about hiking or survival, just because you do a lot of survival stuff doesn't mean you're going to know all the cool gear for EDC. There is a lot of crossover, and for people that know a neat little trick, I would urge you, share it. it. Just even a little thing, because I was surprised when a few people mentioned that they didn't know what this was, when it's something that I've been aware of for a long time. You, you tend to take things for granted, things you think are simple or things you learned a long time ago. People just naturally take it for granted that, well, yeah, of course they would know that. It's a super simple thing. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is go through and show you how to do a little kindling tube. And I like this trick because this is actually pretty useful for a lot of things. One, I would say, and I just didn't have them. These are just whoop, crappy little straws. Let me sharpen these scissors. Um, but bigger, like, milkshake, milkshake straws work better just because you have more room on them. Um, but this creates an airtight, waterproof little capsule, which is great if you want to store pills or other important things. I've seen these kits made into fire kits, sewing kits, fishing kits, medication tablets. I actually keep a dark straw with some water purification tablets in it as well, just because that way... It keeps light off of them, and it keeps them from getting squished and rattling around. So to start, we have our edge, and all you're going to do is take your fire here, melt this down, and then move up and crimp it. And that just makes that waterproof little end there. As far as the length, I usually like to go a few inches just because that way it can fit, say, into an Altoids tin pretty easily. Or I want to put it in a kit, a pouch, maybe even just carry it in my wallet if it's something like medication, something like that. Just small enough that it's practical, or rather large enough to be practical, but small enough to be packable, I should say. So I always like to test. That's me trying to blow air out of the bottom of it. So I know that this point right here is airtight and therefore waterproof. So a couple ways to do it. Uh, cotton balls are always really good for this as well. You take your petroleum jelly, you saturate it, the cotton ball, and then you tear off bits and you put it down in here. I personally like the Q-tip method. So, for me personally, what I like to do, you know what, 
Let me grab some better scissors, I think, here. You know, I was going to get better scissors, but I realized I kind of like the idea. Use the tools I have to do what I want to do. So I have my container. It's essentially just dousing or saturating the tip and then putting that down in there. Now, the reason you want to use some sort of form, whether it's a cotton ball or the head of a Q-tip, is you want some form for that uh, for the tinder itself. If you just have a blob of petroleum jelly, then it's just going to melt everywhere and it's not actually going to do anything useful for you. There we go. Again, uh, well, petroleum jelly is a mess, so if you don't like getting greasy, you can always wear gloves. I'm really not too worried about it. There we go. And just keep filling this up. So I'm going to do this a couple more times. Okay. So I've got about three heads of Q-tips in there, saturated in petroleum jelly. You can see them through there. Now, if you want to get real fancy, you can color code, you know, blue for your medicine if you put pills in it. Uh, green for water purification, red for fire, whatever you want to do. I mean, these just happen to be the straws that I have. These are like most of what I like to pick up if I'm going to destroy it or use it. Just Dollar Tree straws. But really any kind of straw is going to do that you would prefer. There we go. So we want to clean the end. The other thing too is you always want to make sure you leave room at the end. Because if you're going to be sealing it again, you need to be able to actually get a grip to be able to seal it. Now the toothpicks are mostly just for shoving. Or if you wanted to, put a little more, again, kind of substance in this. You could also shove a Q-tip down in here, which I'm not going to do on this one. But tell you what, I'll make another one of these. And I'll use some Q-tips in it too. Just so we can maybe see how these burn differently. Make sure to get the edge nice and clean so that way too when you go to do this next step you're not accidentally setting fire to yourself your work area and as a matter of fact i'm going to go clean my hands so i'm not covered in accelerant all right perfect get this down in there a little bit more just so i have plenty of room up top here. Whoop. That didn't work right at all, did it? There we go. That'll be good. Now, you'll notice I have a desk full of accelerant. I have gotten some of this on myself. Number one thing, always be safe. Don't screw around when you're doing this stuff, whether you're doing it inside or outside. Um, be careful. Don't do something dumb. Uh, unfortunately, I've heard plenty of stories about people doing homemade fire starters and DIY stuff and injuring themselves super badly. So just please, if you're going to do something like this, be very careful. I know that sounds silly, but uh, it doesn't take much to unfortunately really put yourself in a bad situation. There we go. We're going to melt the end. And then we're going to... And there we go. We now have a little waterproof tinder bit. Now what's very cool about this and the way you can use it is a couple different ways. If you wanted to, you could snip this open. Uh, if you wanted to, you could also just throw this in a fire. Now, I do not condone or recommend. I do not like the idea of burning plastic, obviously, but something like this is a good kind of backup fire starter. It's a good way to just be able to have something with you. So even just snipping the bottom and pushing this grease, pushing this petroleum jelly and this kindling out, this is still a completely waterproof, tight, airtight packet. 
So I'm going to do a couple more of those, but I want to show something first because there's always the Altoids tin and that whether it's the Altoids tin or just some other type of tin, pretty popular for fire stuff. And there's pouches, there's all sorts of stuff, but I wanted to try something different. So I spent some time on Amazon and I came up with this. So this is actually technically a waterproof cigarette holder, supposedly waterproof, but it's marketed for cigarettes and um, other paraphernalia. But it's this watertight capsule that I actually really like. The fact that it's this cylinder, it has a lot of uh, has a lot of space in there. No oh, man, maybe this one isn't as great as I thought it might be. I'm immediately having trouble screwing it back together. Maybe it's the milling, maybe it's something, maybe it's Maybelline. There we go. So, this is supposed to be watertight. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a bowl of water, I'm going to put something in here, uh, tissue, paper towel, a test subject, and I'm going to soak this while I make some more of these fire starters. I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our control. This is another thing to make sure if you are going to rely on something to be waterproof, windproof, whatever your gear is, it's the same as EDC for hiking or camping as it is for hiking, camping, same for EDC. Test your gear. If I was going to put something in a capsule like this, say what could possibly be fire starting, life saving fire starting equipment, or medication or something that cannot get damp, you always want to test your equipment. Always, always, because if you are in that situation where it fails be before you knew that it would fail, or if you could have taken measures to improve or fix something before it would have failed, then unfortunately it, it it's just a failed item and you have failed yourself. And sometimes that can have pretty disastrous consequences. So I'm going to see how this works. All right. We're just going to let that soak while I, uh, I make some more of these. But that was a few minutes there. We'll see how this has fared. <clears throat> kind of hopeful because it looked like the it was uh yeah that's totally fine so far i like that tell you what though it's not a bad idea what i am probably going to end up doing i'm going to keep testing this i'm going to see how long this thing is going to last before it starts soaking through just because that's kind of a good measure the other thing i'm going to end up doing though is I am going to end up putting some tape around this, some electrical tape, just to help seal that. It never hurts to have backup as good as something can be. You know, I keep testing this and it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. But say at some point this O-ring in here wears out or breaks, or just I don't screw it on as well as I thought. A little bit of electrical tape around a can canister, container, absolutely is a great way to help, help make sure something is watertight. So this goes back in the bath and we're gonna do another couple of these all right and we have our few little kindlings now all of this came from the dollar store the petroleum jelly the q-tips the toothpicks the straws all of this is from dollar tree the capsule itself this was from amazon tell you what let me look up how much that was okay so this thing was nine bucks on Amazon, which I mean, this thing is heavy duty. Um, I'm actually gonna take these fire starters out, we're going to set them on fire, we're gonna use them, and I'm gonna drop this thing a couple times, see if it actually holds up, see if it's actually worth the nine bucks. But it feels solid, and we're gonna check and see. Yeah, everything's absolutely dry in there. I like that a lot. That's super cool. So, so far, this is a pretty big win. Now, 
obviously I'm just putting a few things in this, but you notice how much space is in here. I wonder, I mean, if you wanted to, wow, that's pretty impressive. A full size Bic can go in one of these if you wanted to. So, I mean, if you're looking for something for some sort of fire kit or really any other type of kit, man, I'll say so far, I would definitely recommend these. That's pretty cool. So tell you what, let's, um, yeah, let's take this outside and, uh, as, uh, as Vine Climber would say, what is the point of having a YouTube channel if you don't occasionally set things on fire? So let's go do that. So what I've actually managed to do here, took my little kit, and on the way out, I grabbed a few things. One, I've got our fire starters. Two, I grabbed a little mini Bic that fits in there. Perfect. And three, I actually grabbed some chapstick because as I understand, uh, I have heard that chapstick is a really good kindling as well. So I wanted to give that a try. But the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to snip one of these open just so you can see once you light this, how good of a kindling it is. Now it's a little bit windy, but you can see that is going. And it goes pretty quick. You can see it's immediately catching the, the Vaseline, keeps it burning. The paper of the Q-tip acts as a good kindling and a good kind of form for it. I'm going to light this other one too, just so you can see once it starts going, how this can work in different ways for you. Again, it's a little windy out here and squirrely apparently. So the petroleum, the Q-tips, the straws, everything just catches easily and burns. It's waterproof. Uh, it's easy to deal with. So if you just have even a couple, a couple of these to throw into some kindling, catches lights and really does a great job. All right, so the other thing I wanted to try since we're out here is, like I said, I had heard that chapstick could be a good kindling. Uh, I've tried it a little bit before, but with just a straight up, like, essentially Vaseline jelly lip balm. So I wanted to give this a try, put some actual, like, lip balm stuff on there and see how this does for us. See if this will actually catch, or if it's just going to melt. So it looks like it's more just melting. I don't see that it's catching as much, which is okay. I mean, like I said, I've done it before with more of a Vaseline-based uh, lip balm before, so if you are going to carry something that both medicates and treats your lips and can also start a fire or be good kindling, I'd recommend just something petroleum, jelly, or Vaseline-based. But as you can see, this stuff burns great, works great, it's easy to deal with, and uh, 
surefire way to get a little bit of fire going. All right, so back inside, and this is absolutely a decent way to start a kit. I like this capsule. Video is not about the capsule, but I like building this kit, these types of kits. It's fun, it's easy, and it's a good way to kind of get hands-on, get some experience, figure out really what you want to do. And I mean, go and try this. It costs th uh, 2 50 3 bucks, 4 bucks. Straw, Q-tips, petroleum jelly, and that's it. And you don't have to get something fancy and watertight. You can do just an Altoids container like this and then wrap some electrical tape around it to really seal it and make it waterproof. You can build these kits out a lot of different ways. I always like to use a little bit of hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is an awesome fire starter, just a heads up. So throw that in there, some toothpicks or, you know, fat wood, essentially. A few more of these fire starters make those be pretty easy, as you can see. Seal this up. And that is a uh, pretty nifty fire kit. So I hope this has been informative. I hope it's been fun. I had fun lighting stuff on fire and... Uh, yeah, thank you as always for spending your time with me, and make sure stay safe, be prepared, and have a great day.